Hello everyone and welcome to another War Leader PvMP video. Today I am going to be showcasing Fights vs. Runekeepers. I've got a healing trade Runekeeper to show you and then a more standard Runekeeper build, uh, lightning and all that fun stuff. And uh, we're going at it with a slightly more damage heavy build. Uh, I'm not using my standard typical build, I've actually swapped out for a more solo and uh, strong build which is going to actually come out handy and uh, definitely going for more damage is the way to go when you really want to have more soloing power with your warlord. Anyway let's go ahead and get right in. Okay so first up is Haikili who is our healing traded runekeeper. Uh, now Haikili he is not exactly a very <laughs> well geared runekeeper because he well, I'm, I'm hitting him very hard. I managed to get crits for 1k, so he obviously doesn't have much in the way of audacity, if any at all. Um, the outposts and all that stuff are balanced right now. And both sides have one relic, so you know, both sides get their 2%. And then both sides each have two outposts, so map-wise everything is pretty balanced. Uh, I'm going just all in on the attack, because I, I know he's, he's taking plenty of damage, and if I can get... You know, my timing down gets the shield bash off at an opportune time when he's down uh, in the last couple thousand morale and I've got some cooldowns, you know, my shout's ready to roll and all that fun stuff, then I should be able to get him bursted before he can effectively put the, his heals up and uh, keep himself alive. Uh, he is putting a lot of damage on me, so I'm going to need to go ahead and use grip right here to keep myself alive, otherwise he will kill me. And there we go. Uh, stun potion and my health pot and now I'm trying to get him I did not get a slow there and he does have some coffee so he's gonna be moving fast I missed out on an interrupt because I didn't have it ready I didn't get him with the shield bash in time so he has healed himself up uh, there I've gone ahead and used quitters he's now slowed uh, but I don't interrupt that and boom right all all the way up there uh, that looked like epic for the ages so now it's pretty much at a stalemate. He's going to be a lot more defensive now. And uh, the fight, it continues for a while. And we have a couple more uh, rounds where I, I do go ahead and attack. But uh, I'm, I'm unable to actually drop him. And in, in the end, we do call it a draw because he manages to run himself out of power a couple of times. And he just gives up. Uh, the nice thing about fighting these healing fairy room keepers is you know, they can do a lot of damage but they don't hit nearly as hard as a pure damage spec and it's a lot easier to survive against them especially once you go into commander stance uh, you can really weather their attacks with a lot of ease comparatively uh, and actually I've got the point defense down I really don't need the point defense uh, against a healer tree root keeper I would say keep the command post down because you'll get that power regen, you'll get the extra damage, all that fun stuff uh, don't worry about having the command post uh, point defense, uh, just stick with the command post. Okay, uh, there's really not a whole lot to, to showcase here, uh, but we'll keep it running for a little while just to, so you can go ahead and take a look at this. One thing that's very nice about this is this is you know, a, a situation I really like to have a rune keeper in when they're attacking me, not with my power bar this low, but with them standing next to my banners, particularly Banner of Terror, and attacking very aggressively using up their power. I love, love, love having a runekeeper that runs himself out of power. That is the time to go on the offensive, put damage on them, especially for being able to put damage back at them, and you know, chip away a couple K morale, and then they find themselves out of power, and you get it, them interrupted for their power restore, and you get them slowed, and you get into brawlers and all that stuff, then that's when a runekeeper will really, really find themselves in trouble, so if they got a brawler stance war leader with command post and RF command right on top of them, and they've only got a couple hundred power, things will get pretty dicey pretty quick for them. Uh, the other really important thing there is that they, the runekeeper is going to go for a lot of stuns. That is, runekeepers panic, they go for their stuns and their mezzes and their daisies. So go ahead and hit that stun pot early, preempt the, the first stuns and everything. Uh, that's going to cause them even more panic when they see that immune sign flashing over your head. And you could even get them to burn all of them at once. And if that's what happens, then you're going to be in a good spot. 
Okay, uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next Runekeeper, which is Nimue. Alright, now I'm going to go ahead and start off in Brawler Stance. Uh, I do have the point defense down and I have our protection. Uh, I'm just going for the rock right here because I want to get rid of that. Never leave a Runekeeper's rock standing if you have a chance uh, to take it out because it's free healing for them. And you're, you're already going to be limited because they will stay at range and just splat at you with their little rocks and magic words and all that stuff. So you're really only hitting them with black speech and intimidating shout. And if you let them get that free healing, they will basically undo everything that you do to them with that rock's effect. So you need to kill the stupid rock. Uh, unfortunately, the rune keeper is going to be duped damage. They're not going to actually heal the rock. And it's really just not going to be a tough to, to take out the rock in any case. Alright, so the fight's progressing uh, well, pretty fairly. I, I'm pretty happy with where things are, are going right now. And you know, I got no problems at all. A couple freaks going by chasing a reaver, so things look like they're going to get a little messy in the background there. <laughs> now I did go ahead and get a stun. I'm going to put some more melee damage on, or should have, but I didn't put as much melee on as I actually should have. Uh, still, all things considered, doing well because I've taken out uh, almost 2,000 morale. Uh, there about 2,000. Oh, got a little bit of healing from that Runekeeper. Uh, there, this Danner through this uh, Guardian, he's jumped in. Uh, there is a warg on him right now. <laughs> that fight is going on in the background. And Nimue decides to back off. Uh, I'm not taking any more damage or anything, so I decide, you know what, let's not halt this. Let's just keep continuing. Do both jump. Uh, I do a shot. And so Nimue decides, alright, let's go ahead. So this is kind of a second start for the whole thing, uh, except I am out about a thousand power. Uh, not going to worry too much about that. I'm much happier just that we can continue on with the whole fight. <laughs> All right, and a uh, little bit of lag there, but as you can see, rid of cold uh, debuff that Nimue is putting on. Most rune keepers are not good about using rid of cold. But as you can see, uh, the big thing about that is induction. <laughs> it makes your inductions takes longer, and that is potentially pretty good to have against a war leader. I, I, and it tears up, so I do go ahead and remove that, which that's just something that you want to do against anybody who's throwing debuffs at you, is always carry those pots and remove them as fast as you can. I mean, sometimes there's certain ones you want to remove over others. But, you know, in general, you know, if you can take it, actually, no, always, if you can take something off, take it off. Don't let them just leave it there and sit. Uh, Spider did have a stray shot go on to Nimue there, but it's not going to make too much of a difference. I mean, it was a dot, but it's already gone, and overall hasn't affected things too terribly much or anything. Still in a pretty good position here. Uh, my banners are both down, though. Uh, but Nimue is uh, there now at 5,000, so uh, I, I'm going to go ahead and go for the attack about now. Nimue is immune to that shield bash, uh, just going for one he more heal right here. And oh, now all the way down to 5,000, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and swap over. Now, as I go into this, I want to, you know, into this uh, the burst attack, try to finish the whole thing off of the DPS race. I'm committing fully. I've swapped out from point defense to command post, changed to brawler stance, changed auras. You want every scrap of damage that you can get. And now this is where the, the traits that I've got really come into play, because I've got lots of damage traits on me, so I hit a lot harder than I normally do. And even more importantly, my heals are going to give me a lot more health than they normally do. Uh, I should be hitting a power pot right now because you want to have power so that you don't run out and get stuck unable to finish it because you hit a skill and don't have enough power for it. Uh, but I'm not hitting that right now. Uh, I also hit quitters right there because I needed morale and I wanted more power. Alright, there we go with the power pot, so I should have plenty to finish this thing off. Uh, I'm not going to have it decided by one person being out of power. But, uh, of course, Nimue has moved away from the banners, which have despawned by now. So that was one thing that 
potentially I could have waited a little bit longer for the banners to come off cooldown or not have deployed them when I did. And that would have been nice to have Banner of Horror down for the whole burst. But uh, alas, that's not how it goes. Uh, still doing pretty good at taking her down. And uh, I, I need to be hitting my <laughs> quit whining and fight a little more often here. Uh, come on, crack the whip, crack the whip. I don't. I haven't hit crack the whip. And I get messed there by Armor of the Storm. And I die. I'm down. 133 morale for Nimue. Very, very, very close finish. Uh, very happy with that fight in terms of you know just it being a good fight, but I'm not happy with the result. I definitely feel like I can kill her. So on to round number two. All right, so here we go. Now, um, once again, I'm going for that stupid rock because you don't want to leave that thing. And 2,400. My goodness, that was quite a crit. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, into Commander Stance, and you know, away we go, and all that fun stuff. Uh, fortunately, this time, I'm not going to get interrupted by some creeps in the background or anything, so it's going to be full power at the start and all that stuff. Uh, the only thing is that I am running into some delays and lag, and this is because of fraps being annoying and stuff, and... <sighs> Well, you can see this is pretty much unplayable. Uh, there we go. It's jumped, and now it's back to being dead. And, well, th this isn't the situation you can play from. And so I'm going to hit the record button, double tap that, and this will resolve itself fairly shortly here. Alright, come on. Come on. There we go. Alright, and so I've managed to recover from that whole thing. Didn't get killed while I was stuck. Uh, but, you know, that's just one of the things that happens when you're recording. <sighs> anyway, uh, more damage. I love the damage. Damage traits really are the way to go for war leaders, just because the damage corruptions, in particular, they increase your healing and they increase your damage. The, the two things that you need more of. Uh, they're even better than morale traits in a one versus one situation, just because you get way more benefit out of having a few extra morale on your heels than you do out of having a, a couple hundred morale, you know, just statically there. Because you'll hit your heels multiple times, and you know, if I'm getting 50 more morale, I mean, you actually you get plenty more than that. <laughs> Every time I heal, you know, all I gotta do is hit my heel a couple times, or any of my heels a couple times, like say five or six, and suddenly I've got more morale out of my heels than I had for having this other stuff traded. So I mean, you could be even more deadly if you were to throw away these last couple of morale traits and go full damage. So th that is the one thing to bear in mind is that this build could be made even better for the one versus one arena. Uh, Sometimes there are opponents where you do need more morale, and uh, when raiding, it is good to have a better morale pool because you take fire from more guys, and you need more space on your bars for, you know, reactions and stuff, and people get in range and bubble and all that kind of stuff. Uh, anyway, interrupted me on my <laughs> quitters never win. Oh. Uh, Nimue is actually one of the few runekeepers who uses that ranged interrupt uh, at all, and actually does use it fairly effectively. Alright, I still need to use quitters here. Alright, there we go, finally getting quitters off. Uh, that restored quite a bit of morale and also gave me a bit more power, so that is good. Uh, Nimue is getting very, very low here. Uh, Banner of Horror is almost off cooldown, but now I'm going to go ahead and attack. Command post down. Stances and aura changed. Here we go. Alright, uh, power potion has come off cooldown. There goes Banner of Horror. Brilliant timing on the cooldown there, so everything is ready for a full attack. Shield Bash actually fires there, whereas la <laughs> previously, in the last fight, it didn't go off. I got stunned off an auto attack, and you know that negated this, the whole mez from Armor of Storm. I, I am just about dead there, barely survived because of that <laughs> quit whining and fight, and managed to finish her with a Shield Bash before I get my heal. Uh, so both of those fights, you know, I had a Power of Fear at the very end, and went for the attack trying to finish the fight instead of dropping, stopping for the heal. And the one time it was a mistake to do that first time, I should have used the heal first and then gone for the attack because there was the mez coming. 
when the second time it was the right call because the armor storm was already gone and Nimue didn't have enough morale to actually survive and it worked out, I got the kill. 124 morale left for me at the end of that, so slightly less than Nimue had at the end of our other fight. Anyway, uh, the big thing to take away is that the last time I talked about runekeepers, uh, looking back at the, the one time I tried to do the burst and failed, you know, it turns out there is a proper way to do it. Uh, you just need to nurse their morale down a little bit more, get them to, to go down further than they're, they're comfortable with, and just keep the fight going. And then when you do go for that burst finish, you got to go all in, fully commit to it, because if you hold back, you're not going to have enough damage and you're going to die. Anyway, uh, that is all for this time. Good luck and have fun out there. Ugmog is out.